this episode of Velocity Labs, we're doing some ball joint maintenance and installing some drop spindles in my 1972 Volkswagen Beetle. When I bought the bug, it came with a bunch of extra spare parts. It came with a spare deck lid, a brand new set of bumpers, and a pair of spindles to lower the front of the car. I wasn't planning on putting these on for a while, but when I took the car to the shop to get it aligned last week, I found out that most of the ball joints and tie rod ends were shot. So I'm replacing those and we're going to drop in the spindles as well and slam this little hot rod down. You can see just how high the front end is here. We can definitely afford to drop it a couple inches. Jack the car up and pop off the wheels. And the identity crisis on this bug continues. One drum from Germany, one drum from Japan. This is like World War II all over again. Anyway, back to the ball joints. First step is to loosen up all the bolts. We also need to loosen up the tie rod end bolt. Make sure to use some PV blaster to loosen things up, and then we'll disconnect the brake lines. Once that's done, grab a pickle fork and break the ball joints loose. I really didn't have the right sized fork for the tie rod ends, and after much hitting and beating with a hammer, I finally gave up and ran to Harbor Freight and got the right tool for this job. Ah. Well, that definitely works. Take the drums off and set them aside. We have to get the other side done as well, and I couldn't fit an impact in the inner tie rod, so I had to crank them by hand until they popped. Once you get those loose, then you can get the tie rod bars out. I made sure to note the number of threads showing so that I could get the alignment relatively the same for when I was putting them back in. Taking them apart was pretty straightforward, but the ends were pretty seized on. Hitting them with heat and a hammer really helped to bust them loose. As always, installation is the reverse of disassembly. Once the tie rod ends were done, I grabbed the ball joint loaner tool from Advanced Auto Parts. Doing this by hand is not fun. These ball joints were pretty seized in there and it took some major elbow grease to even press these a quarter turn. It got so difficult at one point that I backed it off to see if it was stuck, but luckily I found out that it was moving very slowly. And we are out. Once all the old ball joints are pressed out, the new ones get pressed in with the same tool. Again, doing this by hand takes some serious leverage. Even once they were pressed in, just removing the tension from the tool took some major torque to break it loose. The new upper ball joints didn't come with the camber adjusters, so you need to reuse the old ones. A lot of heat and a pickle fork makes quick work of separating them. Ah, hot. Now back to the drums. My wheel bearings needed to be repacked, so I went ahead and did that as well. It's a messy job, but it's not too difficult, and it really makes an improvement when it's done right. This is also where we unbolt the old stock spindles and bolt in the new drop spindles, which will put a two and a half inch drop at the front end of the bug. Before we bolt them in, we can easily clean up some of the old caked on brake dust with a wire wheel and a drill and a bit of brake cleaner. While that's drying out, we're going to clean up and repack the wheel bearings. Brake cleaner works like a charm to make sure that all the old dirt and grease is cleaned out. I found a really good tutorial on how to do this and I linked it in the info below. You can get pretty liberal with the grease here, it's pretty hard to overdo it. Basically, we're just cleaning them up and getting rid of the old grease and dirt, repacking the bearings with fresh grease and installing them back in the hubs with new grease seals. If you want specifics on how to do this job, check out the tutorial video from Richpin that I linked in the info. Once that's done, we can clean up the new spindles and bolt them onto the hubs.
And once that's done, we can finally return the drums with the new drop spindles back on the car and get them seated with the shiny new ball joints. So that's it, it's a piece of cake. Actually, it was kind of a pain in the butt, but uh, at least it's done. Anyway, here's what it looks like dropped down. I love it, I kinda wish I would've done it earlier. I don't even mind the back sitting up a little higher, I actually kinda like it. Oh, and I went to a bug event at the local drag strip last week, and uh, somehow I managed to take runner up in the show class. I even got a spiffy trophy. Yeah, I have no idea, I didn't even wash it. But hey, free trophy. Plus, now I get to say that I'm driving around an award-winning car, so yeah, there's that. Anyway, so what's next? It's summer, so I'm long overdue to get back to the drag strip. Next up, we'll be replacing the leaky power steering rack on my Eclipse so we can get back to the drag strip and make some passes. Hit subscribe, you're not gonna wanna miss it.